technical problems. My name is Mike Sears. This is Seth Morris, and uh, we're from Sears Wealth Management and Insurance Solutions. I'm the president of that company. We're in Rancho Cucamonga, and this is our first Facebook Live uh, edition that we're sending to you. And uh, by the way, we hope to, uh, to uh, continue with this Facebook Live every month. Uh, our next is scheduled for um, May 20th at 4.30 p.m., so we hope you'll come back and join with us. Um, we also would like to encourage you, if you have questions, that you can go ahead and put those in the chat box of your Facebook page, and uh, we'll get a hold of those. And if I can, I'll try to um, I'll actually try to uh, answer some of those questions as we go. So um, let me uh, begin with uh, our topic today is talking about uh, ways to save money uh, for the future and also to um, ways that we can build a monthly budget and how those two work together. That, that really is the things that we'll be talking about. We have about 20 minutes to do that. And so uh, we'll be right on time when we end. And uh, so Seth, what are, what are some of the things that are on your mind about savings and, and uh, those types of issues? So going back, we were talking about you weren't hearing it. Mike, what have you seen in your career has been the biggest challenge for people as far as savings money, saving money goes? Well, I think, I think the biggest savings problem more than any, I think most people would say, the reason I can't save is because my income isn't high enough. And I think uh, my experience has taught me that it really, I mean, it could be, it could be that your income is so low that it's impossible to save anything. And if, and if that is the case, you probably need more training. You probably need to find a way to increase your income. It may even be that you have to work more hours you may have to go back to school, you might have to get another certificate. But I would say that the number one issue really, um, and I think we're hearing that there still is no audio uh, yet. No, no, it's good. Is it okay? Um, so, um, so I think the, the real issue really isn't money production as it is how much money we are, we are spending each and every month. Okay, so. If the problem is not the amount that's coming in and the money is coming in and there's sufficient money there to save, how would one go about making savings a priority in their life? Okay, great question. I think it would be fair to say, and I think all of you who are on this call right now may, may be able to say that we really fall into one of two categories financially. And, uh, and, and we could say that people, most people, by the way, are doing this. They spend money first, and then, then and they try to save what's left. Now, Seth, you're a young guy. You have two small kids. Mm -hmm. If in your in your in your family, if you spend money first and then try to save what's left, what is normally left? Very little or nothing usually. Yeah. yeah. Why is that though? I mean, really, think from a practical standpoint, why is if you spend money first and then try to save what's left, why is there almost nothing left? Well, in my experience, if there's money there, we can always find something to, to buy, some okay. way to spend it. Okay. And those of you who are on the call, is that a true statement? If there's something, if there's if there's money there, is it easy to spend it first? Of course there is. And so if for most people, if you spend first and then save what's left, Seth, there's almost nothing left. But what if we flipped it? What if we took this circle and we said, there's a, there's a few people doing this, but what if we saved money first and then spent the rest? How would that change things in your family? That would change things greatly. But I mean, from personal experience, what if I save money first, spend money, and then I end up using my savings later because it's there? How do I avoid that? Well, I think this leads into really the next section of, of, of a budget. Do you okay. think? Okay. Yeah, I, think, I, mean, I think maybe that's the answer to this. So by the way, most people, when we say the B word, when we, see the, when we say the budget word, most people say, no way, I'm not interested in putting together a budget. It's way too restrictive. But I suppose it could be. But one of the other key issues that we face when it comes to saving is really getting organized. And once we get organized, we can really do some really fun things. So don't look at it as a negative. Let's look at it as a positive. So let's, let's look at 
I'm going to make this square here, if you can see this, folks, as a is, is our budget, okay? That's what we'll call this. And of course, um, and of course, we the first thing when we think about a budget that we have to understand is we have to have an idea as to how much money is coming in the door every month. Now I'm going to put a number of six thousand dollars a month, but it doesn't matter if you're a, if you're a college student and you're uh, working part time, or you're um, you're in your fifties and you're an engineer for a major company making a six figure income. It doesn't matter. Well, let's just say, for example, you're earning six thousand dollars per month, and and then underneath this is all the different places that you spend your money, Seth. Mm -hmm. all your bills that you have to pay each month. Yeah. At the bottom of this is a total. Right? Mm -hmm. The first thing that we know, by the way, you'll laugh when I tell you this, because this is not rocket science. If I have $6,000 a month, it's coming in every month. When we get to the bottom, at the end of 30 days, this number has to be what? It has to be, it has to be less than Six thousand a month. Now I know we all know that, but this probably is one of the most important things. It's called money management, and so if we're going to make these circles work of saving first and spending second, we have to learn to live within our means. We have to spend less in the amount of money that we have coming in the door. But if we come back to this circle of I'm determined that I'm going to save first and then spend second. How does that work from a practical point of view? Now, Seth, you just told me that if you put savings here, mm -hmm. you said you probably couldn't do it. No, it doesn't work. And so what you're saying is we need to save first, obviously. And so if I'm going to save first, how much should I be saving? Okay, good question. How much should I save? Let me say it this way. The, the areas in one's life that are not negotiable, you're gonna do those things no matter what. One of the biggest problems, Seth, with savings is that savings is negotiable for most people. If I have extra, I'll do it. And if I don't, I don't. So here's, here's an item that's not negotiable for a lot of people. A lot of people, say, I'm going to make a charitable contribution to my favorite charity, or I'm going to make a charitable contribution to my church. Where do you think those, those contributions go in this budget? For most people, it's right at the top. Now I'm teaching it to you this way on purpose because I want you to think about what is negotiable to you and what is not negotiable. So for example, if I make charity as my number one contribution on my budget. And let's suppose you decided, Seth, that that charitable contribution was 10%. You were going to make a 10% contribution to charity. Then I would also say to you, then if, if everything we've said so far is right underneath that, let's put savings right underneath that. And let's also do what? What do you think that number should be? If I'm going to make a 10% contribution to charity, what could I pay myself? Hopefully, as much as I'm giving away. Why not? Why not pay yourself ten percent? Now I know some of you are here. If you, if that may not be even an item that's even on your list. Remember the principle: things that are not negotiable, things that you are determined you are going to do every month, is what gets done. But if I take savings and I say, well, you know, if I got some extra, I'll do it. You may say a charitable contribution is important to you, or you may say it's, it's, it's negotiable. So it's the principle that I'm trying to teach you is that if we put savings up front and we say, I'm going to do that first, no matter what, it's gonna get done. Okay. And that means, now here's the tough one. And here's the thing that most people don't wanna do is making the adjustment on the rest of their bills so that they do not overspend the 6,000 a month or whatever it is that you have coming in. Mm -hmm. So what do you think? Well, it's nice on the whiteboard. 
but how long should I be saving? How much should I be saving? I mean, I'm saving 10%. Should I do that forever? Or is there a certain okay. number that I should try and hit? Okay, great. So, so um, I, I'm not gonna touch on these other financial circles, but in context, I, I'll, I'll, I'll bring them to you. So we have, let's put three circles on the board here, okay? And these three circles have, the first one is savings, because that's what we're talking about. The second one is investments. And the third one is insurance, right? It's these three. And we're talking about that savings, by the way. And you also have another circle you could put here, which is income. And we're assuming for this discussion so far that you have income, okay? That you have some sufficient income. Of these three circles, what do you think, Seth, is the urgent element in your financial plan? Well, probably savings. Okay, so, so probably savings. Mm -hmm. So, and I would submit to each of you that savings is the urgent element in your financial plan. Nothing happens without money is saved. Mm -hmm. There's no homes purchased, there's no cars purchased, and we don't have an emergency fund when life throws at, throws at us these events in life. You know how it is, your transmission goes out, or someone bangs into your car, and you gotta get a new one, or your roof starts leaking, and you go to the repairman and he said, we say, how much is it? And he says, it's six grand. So you're going to do one of two things if you don't make savings an urgent element of your financial plan. You're going to automatically go to another circle. And I don't have a place to put it on the board. It's called debt. Because in our society, we only have two places to go when we don't have cash. I oh, maybe said it another way. I have one place I can go when I don't have cash and I'm gonna to go to the plastic. And you guys know what that's like, right? Mm -hmm. And then it's really painful. So the emergency, the savings is really the emergency fund. And this is why it is so urgent. By the way, some of you may be saying, well, where should I save my money? There's no interest. It's not about the interest. The, the, it is the contributions that you make to savings that will make this grow. There's very little interest. Yes, there are some variations, maybe a half a percent with some of the banks you can go to. There may be some very low risk investments you can go to to put this in, but this really is an emergency fund and it will grow. You asked me the question, well, so how much should I save? And the answer is the first goal is 10,000. If you don't have anything in there. You could say it another way. You could say that if I have a person earning $70,000 a year, we could say one third of your annual income, 20 grand would be the goal. But if you don't have 10 in there, then let, let's, let's, let's set as a standard for ourselves. The first goal is 10,000. Okay. I would submit to you that if you have money saved and most people do not, they spend, they're in this circle first, they're spending money first and then trying to save the rest, that there's nothing left. And so when emergency comes, it's plastic time, it's, 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 it's debt time, okay? So this is what we're trying to accomplish right here. So in summary so far, we want to spend less than we have coming in the door, right? We wanna get in alignment what we have coming in the door with what we're spending. And if, Seth, if, we're, if we're not in alignment, if we're spending 6,500 mm -hmm. and we're making six, then we've gotta either We've got two choices then. We either have to increase money production mm -hmm. or we are going to have to spend less money. Okay. And most people don't want to spend less money, but that probably is going to be a key. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts so far about all this? I mean, it looks great. What do I do once I have my emergency fund? I okay. continue to say, what do I do with that state? So today we're not really talking much about the center circle, which is investing, okay? But, um, uh, by the way, we have a question here, you know, should we pay off our house early? Um, that's really a great question. I I'm going to answer it with a very simple uh, statement. I don't like debt at all. And so we want to pay our debts off as quickly as we possibly can. I had a person come in just the other day and ask, so I have some money in my retirement account. Should I use that to pay off my debt? And the answer is, of course, you could. You might need that money to live on, 
But can you imagine? Let's suppose you had $100,000 of mortgage left and you took money out of your retirement account to pay off that debt, you just incurred $100,000 of tax for me. And so, you know, if you're in a 30% tax bracket and you're left with $70,000, that may not be a good choice. It may be a choice if you have other assets, but the challenge with paying off a house early with retirement dollars is that you incur amazing debt or taxes. And so you want to have other sources of funds to do that. Okay. That kind of got us off, your, off, off that, but I got a question, so I thought I'd answer it. Ultimately, 90% of our assets, Seth, need to be in the center circle because this is where rate of return and growth comes from. It comes right here, mm -hmm. okay? And this is where, you know, in the center circle is where we're really talking about investing our money, our 401ks, our IRAs, our Roth IRAs. In California, it can be our house has, has been an asset that has appreciated over time. And uh, which maybe leads us to what we might talk about in our, in our next session because I wanna see if there's any other questions that people have, but um, we were talking about, you know, even just today we were talking about, you know, it would be really nice by the time we retire to be, have a million dollars in assets. I mean, that, you know, you know, the, you know how they say, would, wouldn't it be cool if we all had a million dollars sitting in our, in our retirement accounts or in our investment accounts, right? Mm -hmm. You think that's possible? I don't know. Can someone making $6,000 a month be a millionaire? What do you think, folks? You think it's possible? You know, I uh, when you start doing the math, you know, what when we think about this center circle, Seth, what we need is three things. We need we need time because because growth does not happen in days, it happens in decades. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we need time, we need contributions, consistent deposits into this account. So we need time, right? Mm -hmm. We need deposits and we need a rate of return. We need that. Let's just suppose, and, I, and these are all hypothetical returns. This is not tied to any individual, any individual investment. But if we have time, if we're making deposits, if we get a decent return, we don't have to hit a home run, you'd be amazed at what you could do. You know, I was talking about, you know, if we were making a contribution to like an IRA. Mm -hmm. And by the way, if you're under 50, you could make a $6,000 IRA contribution, right? Every single year. It could be a deductible contribution or it could be a Roth after-tax contribution. Doesn't matter. I mean, for this purpose of growing something, tax-wise, it makes a difference. But if I were putting in $500 a month and I had time, and I had 30 years to make, or 40 years to make that contribution. What do you think the value would be, Seth? You think I could hit that million dollar mark? Well, maybe. Well, the answer, yeah, the answer is you could. In fact, um, I was doing the math just today before this, 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 this happened. And so if we were making a $500 monthly contribution, I think I ran it annually, $6,000 a year for 40 years, you would have approximately 1.1 million in your account over 40 years. Now, some of you who are older are saying, well, <laughs> I don't have 40 years. I might, have, I might have 20 or 25 years. And so you could also start late and still, and still almost get to that number, Seth. Mm -hmm. If I had 25 years instead of 40, obviously I don't have as much time. Mm -hmm. And so my deposits are gonna have to increase. So if I, could increase my deposits to $1,200 a month instead of $500 a month, I'd have about $920,000 uh, in my account. Not quite a million, but I could do it. I could start later and still kind of get there. And so the, the point of this, uh, we're getting towards the end of our happy half hour. I hope it's been happy for all of you here. It's been happy for us. This is our first time doing this. So uh, we're, 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 uh, trying to do the best we can, but I hope you got a couple of principles that you understand that it's really a decision. It really is a decision. And many of us live within our means. That's our problem. And, um, but if you can learn to live within your means and make the commitment that savings comes up here and not down here, you'll get there. And then if you combine that with time, obviously the less time you have, 
the, the, the bigger the contribution has to be to make up the difference because we don't have those compounding periods. But anyway, I'd like to thank each of you for being with us today on this uh, happy half hour. And, um, and we, by the way, we have a raffle. And uh, do we have a winner, by the way? All right, we're gonna spin the wheel here and we're gonna find out who the winner is of our raffle. By the way, it's a it's a twenty five dollar gift card. Yeah, to the restaurant of your choice. I think that's how we set it up. So it's a twenty five dollar gift card, and uh, so if you win the raffle, uh, send us a note and let us know how your dinner went. Joyce. Oh, the winner is Joyce Johnson. We're very excited for you, Joyce. We hope you enjoy this wonderful dinner on Sears Wealth Management and Insurance Solutions. Um, by the way, if you um, enjoy this uh, session today, we hope you'll come back next month. And uh, we'll, uh, we would be happy if you have additional questions. You're also always free to call our office and ask some questions of us, and we'll be happy to try to give you a prompt reply. Uh, signing off here from Rancho Cucamonga, California. We're delighted to be with each of you today. Have a nice day. Oh, thank you.